This year, you came along to the flea market and thrifting with me. We found so, so many unique and interesting things. The best things we found, though, were bargains. You can save hundreds of dollars buying secondhand, and with a little imagination, elbow grease, and love, you can create custom and one-of-a-kind decor for your home. These are the absolute best finds and thrift flips from the year. When it's nice outside, I love heading to the flea market. It seems like a place where it's kind of everything unique, old, vintage, incredibly inexpensive, all rolled into one, and it's just one big treasure hunt. This little stool was one of my favorite finds of the year. It was pretty old and dusty and dirty, but I knew with a little bit of love, we could make this little piece come back to life. As soon as I flipped this piece over, I saw right away that it had been reupholstered at one time, and we're going to do that again. But to do that, all we need to do is remove a couple screws from the underside and separate the pieces. We're gonna set the top aside for a while and work on the bottom first. So here's a little pro tip that I have for you. Anything that is wood or furniture, grab yourself some simple green. You can get it from most department stores. It's a great, not only cleaner, but also disinfectant. So what I did is sprayed, uh, sprayed it on the entire thing, let it sit for a little bit before taking a scrub brush to the entire thing. It gets all the dirt and grime off and then took a microfiber cloth to really clean this thing. That's all we're gonna do to this bottom piece. I loved the way that this shined up as soon as it was clean. Love this finish and kind of antique look. So we're gonna do the majority of the work on this stool to the top. Adding new fabric to a smaller piece like this could not be more simple and easy. So whether you have a thrift find you want to update, maybe something you already have or an antique piece that you're trying to give a different look to, adding some new fabric is an inexpensive and simple way to really update the look. So you can see this one had already been reupholstered with some type of velvet material and some fabric tax, which was holding it down. So there's a couple ways you can go about this. If you have an older piece, you can start completely over by cutting down some plywood, adding some new foam to the top, or because I already didn't have, or I didn't have any of those items on hand, I decided I was going to repurpose what was already there, but obviously it was pretty dingy, gross, and it needed some cleaning. So I took my scrub brush to this with my simple green again, got as much of the dirt and grime off. I even took some Microband 24 to this to really make sure it was disinfected so that this old piece would still be usable and kind of be more of a new piece. So I did use a lot of cleaner and disinfectant, so I let that completely dry before moving on to this next step of reupholstering. So I'm gonna be using some leftover drop cloth for the fabric here. It's already been bleached and washed and prepped, and I do have a tutorial if you wanna learn how to create your own bleach drop cloth. I will put that tutorial down in the description box below so you can check that out later. But it's a great budget-friendly fabric that's also strong and it works great for reupholstering. So what I've done is put this top right onto the fabric, cut some fabric you know, quite a bit larger than this because we can always cut excess off. You definitely don't want it too small. So I'm gonna take a little note or lesson from the previous person that reupholstered and I'm actually gonna use fabric tacks to hold this fabric onto the bottom. Just like they did, you can use a stapler or a staple gun if you have one of those. This one takes a little bit longer, but I didn't have my stapler handy, so I grabbed my fabric tacks, which was in my craft kit. 
So these are really inexpensive too. You can find these in the sewing section at most craft stores and even Walmart. You can see how easy it is to just add new fabric right on top of the old. We're gonna reinstall that onto the top of the stool by screwing the original screws right back down in there to keep it nice and secure. And it was just that easy to kind of bring something old back to life again. So you can see up there in the corner the before and now the after and it's just amazing what a little bit of cleaning and fabric can do for a piece taking something that might have otherwise gone into the garbage into a new piece that i keep paired with my accent chair i love before and afters and if you do too make sure to subscribe and come back because we'll have lots more of those coming in the new year I couldn't pass up these old toolboxes. They reminded me of my papa and what he had in his workshop. So I grabbed this really pretty teal one and it was only $5. So we're gonna repurpose this from a toolbox into a planter, except my problem is, is I'm not the best gardener. I sure do give it a good try, but I've decided to pick some flowers or some plants, I should say, ones that are a little bit more hardy and ones that were a little bit harder to kill. So I went to Walmart, I found these great succulents. Each pack was only $10 each. So it was $20 for all of these total, but I am happy to say I might have left these through a frost outside, but they are still alive. I brought them in for the winter time and I can't wait to put them back into this toolbox this spring so that they can thrive outdoors again. But I literally just added some potting soil down into the box. You might wanna add some rocks down in the bottom there or even drill some holes in the bottom so that you have some drainage. You can put any kind of flowers in here. But like I said, adding those succulents, they're just so pretty and it was a really nice addition to my outdoor potting station. One last addition, or I should say two last things I added were some pebbles. You can find these at Dollar Tree. I just added those right on top. That'll help kind of keep some of the moisture down into the soil. And also my little gnome that is also from Dollar Tree. And this is why I love thrifting so much. I found this box of old weathered wood. Each piece was only 50 cents each, so it's hard to replicate weathered wood. So when you can find it already nice and weathered, it's just such a great moment. So I found different pieces, just grabbed a few, some of these finials, corner pieces, some square pieces, likely from a porch that was outside for a very long time. And we're gonna make three different projects with these pieces. So we do need to do a little bit of prep to these pieces before we can get creating with them. So I took some sandpaper, sanded them all down very lightly, basically just to get any of the dirt and grime off of them. I didn't wanna lose any of the nice patina that they had from that weathered look. I also pulled out the screws and any uh, nails that were in there and just lightly sanded them. We're also going to spray them with a clear matte finish. That's gonna help protect them and make sure that our finish stays intact. So we're gonna let that all dry. And in the meantime, I grabbed out a piece of scrap wood, but I think this will be really, really pretty if you also use this concept with an old picture frame. I really love tiered trays and raised trays. So that's what we're gonna do here. This piece of scrap wood just got a quick sanding and then also a couple coats of paint to try to still give it a weathered wood look. So to do that, my favorite process is to just give the piece a coat of gray paint, let that dry, and then come in with a couple more sparse coats of white paint, and that'll give you that chippy look.
And now what we're gonna do is let that dry and use a combination of wood glue and some brad nails to attach those round corbels to the top. So wood glue on the bottom of the corbels and a few brad nails from the top of your wood down into the feet. We're gonna add those one on each corner. I love this piece. I use it all the time still on my fireplace. I've even used it as a little raised desk area when I need my laptop raised up just a little bit. It would be so cute on a coffee table centerpiece on your dining room table in the corner on your kitchen. Love these raised surfaces so, so much. And if you can't find those antique or old corbels, definitely check the hardware store too. You can find new ones there and kind of give them a distressed look to get a similar look too. This next one I use all the time too. You see it in a lot of my photos. This is an old wood frame that I made a long time ago out of one by twos. And what I did is I literally just used some wood glue to attach those corner decorative pieces to all four of the frame pieces. And I left it just like that. And then what I do is I actually display it with a wreath in the middle, but it would be so pretty to add a photo in the middle there too. But I love changing out the wreaths with the different seasons. So that way it kind of becomes a seasonal but year round piece too. This next one is so easy and I love the way it turns out so much. We're gonna use one of those square pieces. It already had a hole in the middle, so I found a dowel rod that was the same size and also one of these binder clips. I found these at Hobby Lobby. There was two in a pack, so they were only a dollar each, but you can find binder clips at Walmart too. I'm literally just taking my dowel rod and cutting it down to size. We're also going to paint the dowel rod so it kind of matches the wood from the square piece, which is not easy to do. That's why if you can find weathered wood, definitely go that route. But sometimes we have to do a little faux painting to make something work. So I started with some gray paint and then added in some brown paint and some white paint and just really did a lot of blending until I was happy with the finished look. I'm adding some wood glue down into the hole there. We're gonna put that dowel rod right down into the hole and then attach the binder clip to the front of the dowel rod. This is such a beautiful and almost antique way of displaying photos. I found this free printable online, so you can also Google search something that you're looking for in particular that's going to match your home's decor, free printable, just add that to your Google search. And it is so pretty, you don't see the dowel rod so much, so you don't have to worry so much about how that turns out, but you could use these with wood plaques you can get from the craft store too. I feel like you can find shutters pretty often at the flea market, but they're a little bit harder to find at thrift stores, but these I did find at the thrift store. So I snatched them up. They're only $2 each, and I thought it would be fun to show you my favorite way to use shutters or repurpose them. We're gonna turn this one into a really pretty shelf. So this is just a piece of pallet wood that I had, and we are also gonna use two brackets. These are from Dollar Tree, if you can believe that or not. And they had two holes in this bracket already, but we needed two more so we can attach the shelf to the shutter. So I did get out a metal drill bit, took my time. This is pretty thick metal, so just go really slowly. And you'll get there and you'll need two holes on each one of these um, hooks. And then we're gonna use some wood screws to then attach it onto the corners of the shutter and then the shelf onto the top of the brackets. A little tip here is add some hot glue or an adhesive onto the backs of your brackets before adding your screws. That'll make sure they don't move around when you don't want them to and give you an extra hand 
when maybe you need an extra hand and don't have it like I did here. I'm using some really small half inch screws for this to make sure they don't go through the top of my pallet wood. And then an added addition onto the front of this shelf was to also measure out and add in some cup hooks that you just screw right down in there to add some additional storage and organization. I would say all in all with the purchase of the shutters, the brackets, the cup hooks, this was only $5 and it's pretty good size substantial piece that is so pretty and also so functional. And that's the best part when you can wrap budget friendly, functional and beautification into one project. This is definitely one of those. Over the last year and a half, I have fallen in love with brass. I have a collection of brass candlesticks, and so I'm always looking for brass pieces when I go to the thrift store. I found this beautiful box. It definitely has seen better days. It had some gunk on the inside. It was pretty tarnished kind of even wonky and bent out of shape. But for a dollar, I thought it was worth trying to make this one come back to life. So we're gonna be using that simple green along with some Goo Gone and some polishing to really bring this back to life. I love this simple green because it seems to work for pretty much every surface. So glass here, the brass, we used it earlier on the wood. I'll definitely make sure to link it down in the description box below if I can find a link for it. So you might also want to add a little bit of glass cleaner to clean this up and really shine the glass up. But to get it clean, this is what really gave me hope that I was going to be able to bring this back to life. I still really like the aging on it, so I didn't want it to be too clean, but it just did a perfect job. So a little addition, I wasn't quite sure what to put in this little box. So I had these miniature flower pots. It was springtime when I made this. So I also added a few little berries and some greenery to it just to add a little bit of a terrarium type feel to this piece. The perfect addition to my little shelves. And this is the perfect example of just using a little bit of elbow grease and love to make something old come back to life or at least make it functional again instead of it ending up in the trash can. And I love that I can also swap out the inside to fit any holiday or season. I always have my eye out for anything wood and substantial at the thrift store and I found this, I think it's a potato box, something like that. It was handmade, somebody definitely handmade this. So I was absolutely sad to see it go to the thrift store. It was only $5. We're gonna take it from looking kind of old and rustic to a little bit more updated look. So all I did was give it a good cleaning with my simple green, twist the hinges off. We're gonna keep those and save those and use those again and give this a quick coat of chalk paint. I love these paint brushes. I'll link these down below too. You can find them on Amazon. They are great for chalk paint. They're actually made for chalk paint. So it helps your chalk paint go on pieces like this so much more smoothly, a lot less brush strokes are gonna be in your paint. So I did give this piece two coats to make sure it was good and covered with my Waverly chalk paint. I believe this is in the color silver lining. The front of the lid didn't have any kind of handle on it, so we're gonna add one. This is a metal one that I found at Hobby Lobby. I always wait for these to go 50% off, so it was only a couple dollars. Just screwed that right down in after finding the center, marking my holes, and then reattaching the hardware, which also matches well with that new handle on the front, and putting this piece back together. I thought it would be also cute to add a little personalization on the front or customization on the 
the front with a decal. I just found this design on Cricut Design Space. Used some matte black vinyl and applied it to the front. So like I said, I think this is a potato box or you could probably put different kinds of vegetables in it or even maybe some grocery bags for storage for those. But you guys let me know down in the comments below, what would you use this box for? So this light was a pretty good bargain find. It had the little hanging cord with it too. Usually these light bulbs run about $5 or more and those kits usually run around $10 or more. So I felt like for a dollar, I got a pretty good deal right off the bat. But we're gonna use this lighting kit and a Dollar Tree metal bucket to make sort of a vintagey old looking lamp. So we're gonna take this apart. You can actually pull this apart to expose. Be very careful that you don't pull this too far apart. But what we wanna do is use that casing on the outside to use as a template and draw around that on the bottom of this Dollar Tree bucket. Take a metal drill bit and drill some holes to create a big enough hole for our unit to fit down into. So I used a combination of a metal drill bit and my pliers to knock that hole out large enough. So I'm also gonna take my pliers and at the seam in the back, just kind of push a lip up underneath there. That's gonna give us room for our cord to sit so this piece will sit flat on our tabletop. And we can go ahead and then put this together now. We're gonna run our cord from the top down into the bucket and out the back side. Kind of twist your lighting mechanism down in there tight. You can add a little bit of glue here too to help hold it in place. Just make sure your cord comes out where you moved that lip out of the way and you have a new light that literally only costs two dollars with a one dollar bucket from dollar tree and a one dollar thrift store find so i was redoing my living room for more of a mid-century modern boho twist and feel and I really wanted a large mirror for this console table area, but they are so expensive. I found this huge mirror, it was only $10 at the thrift store, but I wanted it to match this console table that had black legs. And the, the mirror itself was actually more of like a two-tone light brown, dark brown, so it didn't match perfectly, but all we need to do here is add a little bit of paint to that. So what I did is taped off all of those cool geometric mirrors with some painter's tape and then used some black chalk paint to change the color of all of the edging. That did a couple things. First of all, it is a matte finish. So it kind of looks like metal once you have it all painted. And it also is going to really match with the legs of the console table. Chalk paint is great about attaching and not scratching so much on any surface, but we're also going to just go ahead and seal this paint in to make sure we have a permanent finish on this mirror. So this is a polycrylic. It is matte finish, so it dries clear. You don't see it, but it still has that nice matte black finish when we're done. Once all of that has dried, we're gonna remove all the painter's tape and that is when the magic really happens. This was an extremely heavy mirror. So I flipped it over on the back and I used D-ring hooks for anything super heavy like this. You can find these at Walmart hardware stores. I'll link these down below too because you can also find them on Amazon. And I'm also using anchors and screws. I always buy this giant box at Ikea because it comes with different sizes and options. 
added those to my wall and slipped the mirror over those D hooks. And I have a nice secure piece because this was a, like I said, very heavy mirror. A mirror like this likely would be $100 and up new so definitely a really amazing bargain for finding this at the thrift store for only ten dollars So this is just a really fun idea. I came across all of this cast iron. This guy was only $5 and I thought I was getting a pretty good deal. And it just reminded me of fall and a chalkboard and a jack-o'-lantern. So I thought we would go that route with this guy. So I did remove that sticker and it left some residue behind. So I'm gonna clean it up with a Lysol wipe. You can see all of the dirt and grime that kind of comes off there with it. But when I flipped it over to clean it, you can see there was a 50 cents <laughs> written on the back. So maybe I didn't get as good of a deal as I thought, but still $5, not too bad. If you can find cast iron for 50 cents, definitely grab it. But here's the idea here. You can use cast iron as a chalkboard. So I literally just drew this fun little jack-o'-lantern face on with some regular chalk. You can change this out with holidays and seasons. I also like to take a little tissue and kind of blend it, give it a little bit more dimension. And then you can also use some light aerosol hairspray to kind of set it so it doesn't come off if you don't want it to but if you're going to be using these cast iron skillets to cook in don't recommend doing that this is just more for display but how cute is this guy and i love the kind of rustic fall vibe it has let me know down in the comments below which one of these thrift flips was your favorite and if you love watching thrift flips to get ideas i'll have a playlist popping up on your screen with tons more ideas please hit that thumbs up button for me. That helps out my channel so, so much. Subscribe if you are new and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.